All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP. This is a model 23-G116. All right, um, this is an HP Pavilion 23 all-in-one PC. All right, I think on the front they also have Pavilion 23. All right, so anyways, you're going to be using a PH2 screwdriver um, or maybe even a PH3. Um, but we're going to use a PH2 screwdriver. There's two screws. All right, we're going to undo the screw here. It's not going to come out, but just twist it until you feel it click. Okay, keep twisting, and you'll eventually feel it like that. You'll you'll actually hear that click as well, all right? And then we'll go to the other side and do the same thing. Okay, these screws stay in place, and they actually help remove the cover because it pulls it away. So it helps undo some of the clips um, at the bottom. Okay. All right, so as you can see, uh, or maybe you can't, uh, it caused a separation here, and we're basically gonna use that to help pull the case up. So basically just gonna have to pull, there's a lot of clips, it's gonna be very tough. You might wanna use a uh, flathead screwdriver here if you can't just pull it up, but let me see if I can do this, okay? I'm gonna go from the other side. Sorry, smashing all my stuff over here. Okay. So what you're going to do, hold this down and we're going to go from here and just pull up. Okay. All right. And it's going to be tough. So keep that in mind. All right. You got to kind of pull kind of hard, but there we go. All right. So it helps that you have this little stand here that you can hold down and then you just pull up and it might cut into your hand. So yeah, it's a little bit tough to pull, just pull on it really hard. And then you kind of just go all the way, the sides kind of unclip, and then you just wiggle it, and there we go. All right, so there we go. Hopefully none of the clips broke or anything, but there we go. We got that off. You can see if you want to take the stand out, you can. There's all these screws, but we're going to leave that alone because we don't need to do anything with that. Okay, now we have access to the inside. Okay, let me see. Maybe we can get a thumbnail here. Okay. All right, I found it's best for my thumbnails to do like four separate images, so we got that. Okay, hard drive here, um, you use the same screwdriver, one screw. This is spring-loaded and it stays in place. Once you do that, you can actually pull this back, it slides back, and you can take this out. All right, so there's four screws here, and they have these little spiky wheel things around it. Um, but to take the hard drive out, you undo the four screws, and then you can actually pull the hard drive out from this metal tray. All right, and obviously, oops, I put some tape here before, but I don't need that. All right, and then um, I guess I'll take out the hard drive so I can get that piece of tape out, and you can see. Um, but yeah, you can put a new hard drive in here. Um, if you wanted to put an SSD, uh, I don't think, yeah, it doesn't have screw mounts for an SSD. So, I mean, you can put an SSD, uh, in here, but you'll probably want to use like some double stick adhesive or maybe, uh, I would just roll up a piece of tape, um, to do it. Uh, you can probably also get a three and a half, uh, uh, 3.5 inch to 2.5 inch hard drive adapter. The only thing is if you use one of those, it's very important that the hard drive will line up in the same spot with the connector because this doesn't move. So it's going to have to be connected exactly in the same spot, right? So here you can see the hard drive just slides out like that. I put some tape in here before because I was holding the screws in place when I removed them. All right, so I'm going to kind of just clean that a little bit. Oh, that adhesive's kind of stuck there, which it's, it's whatever, it doesn't do anything. Okay, so, hard drive is out, we're going to just slide it back in, okay, very simple. Again, if you're using an SSD, it's much smaller, um, but what I would do is you can get an SSD roll, you can roll some tape around backwards so it's like a loop, and it's like stick on both sides, or you can use double stick tape, and then you can basically stick the tape um, on the... SSD, slide that into the connector, and then when you slide this in, just be very careful to kind of go um, try not to get the hard drive to stick to it or the SSD to stick to it. And then when you slide it over, then you can kind of like help pull it up from in here. Okay. Um, the other way, you would have to get like some kind of release tab. 
So anyways, there's ways you can do it if you really wanted to. Or you can kind of try and line this up and then find where that goes with the SSD. And then just stick the SSD in so that these connectors stick out just the same amount. All right. So if you were to try and upgrade to a 2.5 inch SATA SSD, it is doable and I highly recommend it. The customer just wanted me to clone everything over. Um, I don't know if they'll want to spend extra to upgrade to an SSD. Maybe sometime in the future, I'll ask them. Um, they already kind of spent a lot because they were they had their old computer that we pulled the hard drive from. It was Windows 8.1. And I had to find a way to activate that and then update it to Windows 10. So that was kind of a lot of work and kind of painful. So, yeah. All right. Anyway, screw these things back in. They actually screw in really tight until it doesn't turn anymore. So just turn those screws. Oops. Make sure that it lines up right. This is kind of going in crooked, I think. It's kind of a little difficult. Okay. Alright, you should be able to tighten it easily until it reaches the end and then it gets super tight. Oh, is that, uh, is it going? I don't know if it's even, maybe this one needs to be loosened a little so it can reach on both sides. Is it going in? I don't know. It doesn't seem like it. Huh, what is happening here? Oh, I think the the screw mount is screwed up. <laughs> Anyways, so I don't think the screw is going to go in because it seems like it just ate through the the metal of the hard drive. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let me try on threading it some. It's weird. It wasn't like that before. It went in properly. Now it doesn't want to. I think because the rubber piece came out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now it's tightened in. Oop. And I dropped the other one. Okay, so I would um, don't tighten the screws, like all of them in all the way. Leave it a little loose. Sorry. So that way it has some room that the thing can move over and then you can get the screw in on all sides because I think now it kind of pulled itself out somehow. This blue rubber piece, I'm going to try and put that back in first because it's not supposed to be out like this. It's supposed to be wedged inside. If you look at this, you see that? It's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be wedged in here. There we go. Okay, get that back in, get that screw in, yeah, I don't know, I think that screw is toast, it doesn't want to go in for some reason, I don't know why, let's try putting this one there, okay, this screw works, I don't know what's going on with the other one. That one actually tightened in. Is this screw damaged? Hmm. I think the, the threads of this screw are like, something's weird about it. It's not, yeah. Hmm. The threads of this screw are like, messed up. So that's why it wasn't screwing in right. I don't think I can get this screw to go in. Yeah, okay, it kind of worked. Good enough. And we'll tighten this. You want to make sure these are tight because you don't want the screws coming loose and then rolling around inside the computer, okay? So make sure that when you tighten it, it doesn't go want to go anymore. This one I can still tighten. There we go. And this one looks like it's not in all the way either, but... All right. So there we go, we'll get that, line it up, and lock it in. All right, sorry for that long process of getting that hard drive in and out. All right, you got the two speakers here. Um, we're gonna take this metal plate off so you can see what's underneath. 
you got the CD optical disc drive here. Um, there's one screw, and then you can pull that out, I believe. So same thing, spring loaded, and then can we pull this whole thing out, or is it caught? Ow, yeah, there we go. All right, so yeah, if you want, you can also get a um, hard drive adapter for this if you want to put a two and a half inch SATA hard drive in here or two and a half inch SATA SSD. You will have to transfer this bracket over. There are two screws in there. They look like probably PH1, JS1, or possibly even a PH0, but I think a PH1 would work. All right, anyways, we'll slide that back in. Um, I think this is like a 12... 7 millimeter or whatever there's a thicker sized assist uh cd drive slot and it's the sata type okay so if you wanted to get that an adapter for that there's the fan two screws there um there's this little control board i'm not 100 percent sure what that's for um i try not to mess around too much if i don't know what those little things are all right so huh it looks like there were some screws here but they're missing now so there were probably two screws, one on either side here. I don't know where they are, but uh, it looks like they're gone. Anyways, we pull this up and then it swings over and we can take this out. Interesting. So it only had two screws. I don't know where they are, but uh, they're missing. So yeah, um, I don't know if it used the same type or if it uses the kinds that are in here. And I believe these use either a big flathead screwdriver or a T15 or Torx 15. Okay, anyways, there's a SATA connector here for the hard drive, SATA connector here for the CD drive. You got all these other little cables going there. I think this is the power for the SATA. And then you got the power for the um, SATA for the hard drive. Sorry, um, this is the power for the SATA to this. And then this cable is going to this board. Um, we got one stick of RAM here. We're going to pull that out. The customer brought a different computer that's old. Um, and that RAM I'm going to be swapping over. But this is um, PC3L 12800S. It's a 4 gig stick. Um, give me a second. I'm going to go grab their old RAM. I think it's slower RAM, but we're going to use it because they have two 4 gig sticks. So they'll have 8 gigs instead of 4. So let me go grab that. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So we'll find out if it works with the slower RAM. So this is a uh, PC3 10666, all right? So I think it's a slower type of RAM. I don't know, we'll, we'll find out. Um, the RAM, when I had the, the four gig stick, when I checked it, it was showing as a 1333 megahertz, all right? This should go in. I don't know why it's not going in. Okay, there we go. I had to use two fingers to put a bit more pressure. Um, and it you have to put it in at a slight angle like this, okay? Sorry, I know it zoomed somewhat out, but hopefully you get the idea. Oh, give me a second. All right, so we got the two sticks of RAM in. Let's take a closer look here. Um, so here is the speaker connector here. It looks like it slides back, but I don't want to pull it out and risk damaging anything, so I'm going to leave that there. Okay, uh, what else? We've got a CR2032. Um, the battery, you got to push in that way, and then you can lift it up. Um, the CPU looks like you can replace it. I'm not sure how upgradable it is. Um, usually, you have to stick with the same generation and figure out what the socket type is, depending on the current uh, processor that's in there. Got another connector here going inside, right? Fan connectors right there. Um, you got the wireless card here, you got two more connection connections there, probably one for the camera or something. Um, you can actually see the wireless antenna here and here that do connect to that wireless card. All right, again, speaker with the wire running across. Uh, what else? Um, you got a bunch of little jumper cable, jumper sp spots here. I'm not sure what's what. If you know what it is, I don't know, you can maybe figure out. This says boot right, but I don't know what that, what exactly that does. You got this that says boot block. So, yeah, I don't know what those jumpers are for. I wouldn't mess around with it. Maybe one lets you reset the um, BIOS. Oh, actually, this one says clear CMOS. So to clear the CMOS, usually you just move that jumper over down here and then 
uh, wait a few seconds and then move it back. Oh, here's the clear password. So if you have a BIOS or CMOS password, um, probably you just pull this jumper off and that will clear the password. Okay. Um, so I don't know what these other jumpers are over there. Um, you don't always have this uh, clear BIOS password jumper. So keep that in mind. Not all the computers will have an option to do that. Um, I'm going to see if I can find some screws that fit here and there. So that way I can secure the bottom cover. Uh, let me go find some and I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. I found a couple screws that kind of use the same screwdriver as these. So we're going to use that. All right, and these are T15 or Torx 15 screws. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this metal plate back on there and then screw that back in. So again, it goes um, to put this on. You kind of have to go vertical like this. Okay, make sure these ports and everything line up. You don't want to accidentally damage them. And these uh, line up with the little raised bumps there. Okay, so you line that up. We'll swing that over. Make sure everything is in line, that you're not damaging anything. And then we can get that down, all right? So I got two screws again. These are T15 or Torx 15 screws, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and hold that down and then tighten that into place, all right? I don't know what happened with the original screws there, but there we go. They look to be about the same. I have a feeling these used to be silver screws, but that's fine. They, As long as they hold it down, it doesn't really matter. Okay, all right, so there we go. We got everything tightened up. Now all we gotta do is get the bottom cover back on, all right? Also, if yours isn't turning on, um, this model is very picky with chargers. You have to use a very specific charger from HP. You can't just match the voltage and amperage. I tried a Dell one with the same exact voltage and amperage and it didn't take it. So you wanna make sure um, if your computer's not turning on, try another charger um, that's designed for this uh, device specifically. All right, anyways, to put this back on, we just line everything back up. We are going to click the top back in first, so just on top, click in just like that. Okay, and make sure the gap is closed. Then you work your way down, down the sides. Sorry if I'm blocking the view. And then we'll go ahead and tighten these screws in place, okay? So I like to turn it backwards, and then you feel it click, and then go ahead and tighten it down. And just tighten it until this gap here is completely gone, all right? You should feel like you keep tightening and it doesn't tighten anymore, right? And then you can go ahead and kind of push down here. Kind of you want to push inwards as you push down, all right? And let's go ahead and tighten this one down as well. There we go, and then, oops, sorry, and then just click all that back in. Then you just want to look around, make sure the edge is all closed up on all the sides, this side as well, this side as well, and the top as well. And that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel uh, with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't help out that way, please help out by watching a few of my other videos and then liking and commenting on those as well, because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Other than that, let me go plug this in and then just make sure it turns on. All right, I'll see you guys over there. All right, I powered it on. I do see, oh, there we go. There's the HP, click that back in. And we should see the Windows thing coming up. And that's pretty much it. We're good to go. Thanks for watching. Again, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. All right. So apparently this RAM's also running at 1333 megahertz or so it says. And now we have 8 gigs. All right. Um, you can see two, two slots used before it was only showing one. And yeah, I don't know why it's showing 9.1. What is that? Uh, 5.8 gigs available. 1.9 gigs in use, so 8 gigs DDR3. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.